Hey folks, Embedded World is rocking and rolling. We are seeing all of the hottest new tech in the embedded space. I am so excited to be here at Siemens with Ash. We're going to talk about some of the exciting stuff that you guys have been working on. Absolutely, thanks very much uh, for having us. Um, so, we are Siemens EDA, and at Siemens EDA within Pave360, um, we're helping our customers to shift left their SDV development, uh, SDV being software defined vehicle. Um, and the reason for that, very simply, is that software defined vehicle is very complicated. <laughs> uh, and it's going to get more complicated. And um, at the end of the day, a lot of that complexity comes in the software development side of things. And so what we're trying to do is to help our customers to really take that software development and shift it left in their project plan so that it's happening in parallel with any hardware silicon uh, development that might be happening. The way in which we do this is that we, we have three categories, which represents the kind of development flow that uh, vehicle makers would go through, right? So the first one is uh, trying to develop your software in a, on top of a virtual digital twin environment sure. so that you can get functionally correct software as early in the process as possible, right? Once you have that uh, functionally correct software, you can lift that onto a more accurate version of a digital twin, which then incorporates RTL, um, which is the hardware description language. It's going to be much more accurate. It's going to be nanosecond level timing. It's going to give you uh, potential to gain power metrics from that SOC. And you can understand how the software that you developed in the previous category will then uh, interact with the real hardware, as close to the real hardware as you can get. Yeah. So if you then need to make changes, you can make changes to both the hardware and the software rather than what, what was previously done, which is you wait for the hardware to be complete and on the market, then you develop your software, and that of course means you can't now go in and change any of the hardware. So you're stuck with only being able to change software. And that means longer development times, that means uh, longer validation, it means it just makes everything much harder to do. So doing it this way means that you have the capability of changing both the software and the hardware and iterating between functional validation and, uh, and accurate regression testing. Yeah. Um, and then once you've done all of that, then you move on to the third category, which is then a system of systems validation. Right Now, um, the complexity of SDV basically means you need to be able to test whatever you're developing in a real world environment. And you're not going to put that in a car and you know, risk running over people. Right? right. So what you actually really want to do is to develop it in a system of systems environments that is also a digital twin solution, right? And uh, the way in which we do that is we use our backplane technology, which uh, allows uh, developers to hook up the systems that they were developing with other components that also simulate real world stimulus. So that could be a carless simulation to develop the scenario of a car driving through the streets. Um, it could be a MATLAB model or multiple MATLAB models for a drivetrain or even something as simple as windows or seat heaters. Yeah. Uh, and you plug all of these things into the backplane and uh, the backplane then manages to synchronize all of these different components so that you create a meaningful simulation. Once you have that meaningful simulation up and running, you're then gonna take the data that you get from that simulation and analyze that to understand, okay, is, you know, is my piece of, of what I'm developing, is my piece operating in the way that it should be operating within the context of a real world system. And, and so, I think it would be great if you would introduce us to your good friend Marv, or as his friends know him, the Mini Autonomous Reference Vehicle. So Marv, Marv is, uh, is an example of that third category that I was, I was telling you about. Um, so here we have uh, a system of systems implementation where we have uh, a, a, essentially a car that is operating in the real world, obviously at scale, right? But um, he's, he's going to do everything, he's going to be controlled by a virtual environment, okay. right? So now we have the real world talking to a virtual environment, which will then, con is an automated uh, vehicle environment. So essentially it's a, it's a perception stack, um, object detection, uh, classification, all that stuff that is required to make decisions about what the car should do. The car should turn left, car should turn right, avoid an obstacle, stop, slow down, go faster, etc. Yeah. Um, so um, my colleague over here, Jeremy, is going to bring up uh, the simulation. 
So as the simulation comes up, you'll see all of these various different windows that represent different parts of the system. Um, you'll see how the intelligent parts of the system are recognizing a variety of different elements in the scenario. You'll see the scenario itself, and you'll see the car uh, that will come up. And fairly shortly, what you'll see is the car will connect itself to the real car. And now as the car is moving, the wheels are moving on the car. As the car is turning left, you can see the wheels are turning left. And it's doing some avoidance, so the car is, is, is turning. So now you can see and almost try and validate that what you're seeing in a simulation is actually what's going to happen on the, on the real car yeah. at the end of the day. And up here, what you'll see is all of the different uh, detections that are happening. Um, so it'll look for people, uh, the stack will look for cars, it will look for a variety of other obstacles and, and manage and make decisions about what the car should do. Yeah. And, and all of this is underneath our uh, backplane technology. Ash, this is all really cool stuff. Thank you so much for talking us through right. it. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for having me. Really appreciate it. Folks, we've got tons of more stuff coming for you, so make sure you stick around.